Oh, hey there. How's it going? I was just checking out the cool drawings that you guys sent me for the art teachers we are from the project last week. I must say, you guys are pretty creative. I haven't put one up on my wall over here. This is from Sam in sixth grade. He made me into an owl. How cool is that? Did you know that owls are the school mascot from Leading Edge Academy Online? We're going to learn more about that next week. But this week, we have something different to talk about. You might have seen it over here. Sketchbooks. Do you ever wonder how artists keep all of those crazy ideas in their head? Well, they use something called a sketchbook to help them out. Let's check it out. Today's lesson is the sketchbook. Now, some of you may already have a sketchbook and some of you may be asking, what is a sketchbook? Well, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, then this lesson is gonna help you out. Just like we wanna learn about anything new, it's important to ask ourselves the five main questions. What, why, where, when, and how? So let's begin. What are sketchbooks used for? Doodling, practice a new medium like watercolor or a new technique like shading as a journal or diary, to document an observation, like if you see a new flower or bird and want to draw it for later, sparking creativity, and of course, having fun. Why should I keep a sketchbook? Sketchbooks are portable. Sketchbooks are easy to grab and go, and for that reason, I tend to sketch more when I use a sketchbook instead of individual sheets of paper. I even keep a wall-sized sketching kit on the table besides the front door so I can grab it whenever I leave the house. Having sketching tools easily at hand can encourage creativity. Sketchbooks are multi-purpose. You can use your sketchbook for, you know, sketching, but it also has loads of other uses. It can also at the same time be used as a diary, a calendar, a travel journal, a place to practice lettering, or press autumn leaves, or even a place to put mementos or photos. I have to keep lists on the back side of the pages, or I'll even draw fun doodles and make daily notes such as pancakes for breakfast. Sketchbooks document progress. Since most people tend to start at the beginning of a sketchbook and work their way through, a sketchbook can become a timeline of skills, observations, and achievements. A brief flip through my sketchbook reveals a bit of improvement from a year or a few months ago, and that's encouraging. And who doesn't need a bit of encouragement now and then? Sketchbooks document mistakes. Just as a sketchbook can document great moments in your artistic journey, it also documents those not so great moments. Since all of my scribbles are bound together, it is much more difficult for me to discard artwork that I judge as poor, messy, etc. In fact, I have some downright ugly stuff in my sketchbooks, but this is a good thing. A learning curve never follows a straight shot upward. And work that is less than perfect is a reminder that we learn as much from our mistakes and messes, and possibly even more than we do from our successes. And most importantly, keeping a sketchbook binds a story. A quick flip through my sketchbook brings back a flood of memories. That day that we spent at the park, how that old tree used to look in our front yard, or the morning in April that we had snow flurries and had French toast. Overall, these stories are nothing exciting, but they're my stories. These scratch-made journals are documenting memories, moments, and proof of nature's goodness. And these are things that any of us should not dismiss easily. When and where should I work on my sketchbook? You can work on your sketchbooks whenever and wherever you want. That's what's great about a sketchbook. You just need a pencil, a pen, or whatever medium you want. It's all up to you. And wherever you are, just start sketching. If you're having trouble finding time to work on your sketchbook, a great time is right before you start your art lessons. We'll help get those creativity juices flowing. That was a lot to digest. Why don't you pause the video and take a break? We'll be back in a second. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. 
let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And now, back to our video. I have a lot of students come up to me and ask me, hey, Mr. Ludwig, how do these famous artists get so good? One way that artists do this is by practicing in their sketchbook. I like to think about like a basketball player practicing before and after the games. Have you ever heard of Kobe Bryant? He's probably the go to basketball. But even though he showed great talent at an early age, his work ethic and practice left other players speechless. Check this video out. You know, look, I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at seven. I was like, you know what? I'm going to come to the Staples Center because we're playing this when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq. Okay, this is, this is like the championship Lakers. I said, you know, I'm gonna get there at three o'clock and I wanna make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room and then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. Who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down and of course I still heard the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out? So he was working out like it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here right? and he's still going and it's not like his moves are nonchalant <laughs> lazy he's doing like game moves you know um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes I'm like I want to see how long this goes I sit out there and watch another 25 minutes and he got done I said okay I think I've seen enough go play you know come back get in the sauna get ready for the game that game he drops 40 on us okay and after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, Hey, Cove, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, Because I saw you come in, <laughs> and, I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? I bet you didn't know that about Kobe. Want to know about another goat of art? His name was Leonardo da Vinci. You might have heard of him. He painted the Mona Lisa. But he has sketchbooks too. Let's check out this video about him. One of the glorious things about Leonardo da Vinci is that he left us more than 7,000 pages of his notebooks. I said, let me just start reading those notebooks. And I loved everything about them, like the to-do lists, where he would say, describe the tongue of a woodpecker, or how do people walk on ice in Holland? All sorts of weird things he put on his to-do list, and yet to save paper, he'd do things like do his little geometry drawings. You can see him trying to tackle the math problem of squaring the circle, but then his mind drifts a bit, and he's drawing little mountains and triangles, and soon he's drawing a landscape with rivers that curl, and then hair that curls. So you see his creative mind leaping around on page after page of these notebooks. Now that you've learned about sketchbooks and why it's important to use them to practice your art, let's see what we're doing this week. The project this week is to get a sketchbook. We're going to be using them every week. I'll present you with a new topic and you are going to make me an awesome piece of artwork. So where do you get sketchbooks? Well, you can get them at most stores. Walmart has them, Target, even the dollar store has sketchbooks. Just go and look in the school supply or the section. But maybe you want to be a little bit more creative and make your own sketchbook. That'd be pretty cool. Well, guess what? It's super easy. All you need is like five sheets of paper, maybe some construction paper for a cool cover, and just some way to put it all together. In fact, I found a very cool video online to show you just how to do when it. When we get started, you're going to need five or more sheets of blank paper. Necesitamos cinco o más hojas de papel. Primero, take all of your paper and match the corners up so your pages are straight. Now gently press and fold in half. If you have some, you can also use a sheet of construction paper for your cover. Place the blank pages inside and you have your cuaderno de bocetos. Now you have some choices. Choose one of the following options to bind your pages together. Option one is using a rubber band. You'll need to make sure it's big enough to fit around your pages without folding them. Tiene que ser grande. 
Option two is to staple the edge of your papers together. You only need three staples, uno arriba, en el centro, y abajo. For your third option, you'll need scissors. Make sure all of your pages are folded neatly and stacked together. You're going to cut a small slit about an inch from the bottom and another small slit about an inch from the top. Then you're going to separate your cover from the rest of your pages. You're going to very carefully and slowly cut a thin line between your two slits. When you open your cover, it will look like a long rectangle in the center. Now, put your cover to the side and take your inside pages. Fold them upside down like a tent. Cut a line from the bottom to your slit. Turn it around and cut another line from the top to the slit. Don't cut too far. Next, you're going to open and roll your inside pages up gently like a burrito. Slide it through the opening of your first page. Gently unroll your pages. Ahora tienes un cuaderno de bocetos. The final option is to get creative. There are many other ways for you to bind your sketchbook. Look for things in your house that you can use, like hairpins, a sewing needle and thread, or any other creative ideas you can imagine. The possibilities are endless. Whether you decide to go out and get a sketchbook or make your own, I just want to see a picture to make sure that you have one for this year. So take a picture and upload it to the submission box. You can use your uh, camera there for this one. All right, I think I might make something in my sketchbook now that I'm super inspired. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. When I was finishing up editing this video, I realized that I forgot to mention that the due date for getting or making your sketchbook will be next Monday, August 21st. Next week, you'll start working on your sketchbook. So I want to make sure that you're ready to go. As always, reach out to me if you're having any difficulty getting started. See you soon.